Thank you for joining us at Bottom Line this week. And on the panel to talk about the news of the week is Dave Mildenberg, the editor of Business NC, and Colin Campbell, the editor of the NC Insider State Government News Service. Colin, start us off. Tell us a little bit about what's going on this week in the legislature with regard to redistricting. Yeah, so redistricting is really the, the only show in town. They've got a uh, meeting on Thursday that's stretched into three or four hours at least uh, to figure out the criteria that they're going to set for redrawing the legislative maps in the next couple of weeks. We're still a week or so out from actually seeing what the maps look like and seeing you know what district you as a constituent may find yourself in come next year's election once all this is said and done. Uh, but the criteria is pretty important because it determines uh, how the map are drawn and sort of how the partisan advantage comes out and the wording that they're going with on the Republican side for partisan advantage is that quote political considerations and election results data may be used in the redrawing. Now a couple years ago when they did the congressional races they basically came out and said we want 10 of 13 seats to be Republicans. There's no numbers out there for how many Republican mm -hmm. seats uh, will be through this redrawing process. Uh, Democrats of course have their own set of criteria that they'd like to see used but uh, they're going to not have the numbers to get those uh, votes through and with their criteria for this meeting. So once we get through this part of the process, uh, the legislature has to produce these maps back to the federal courts by September 15th. September 1st is September the deadline. September 1st. Yeah. And, and then what are the next steps? Yeah, so at that point the uh, court will have the opportunity to review and make sure that uh, it's okay with the maps that they've adopted. Um, and my understanding is the plaintiffs in the case may try to get those maps thrown out depending on how they come out and ask the court to then draw maps. But if the court is okay with this, uh, then you go through the filing process process at the end of this year and early next year and we'll have elections under the new maps uh, in November 2018. Do you have a sense yet of what these maps are likely to produce in terms of the competitions next year for legislative seats? Yeah, so they've come up with this map of county groupings that they're going to stick to, and that's basically clusters of counties where uh, they'll draw three districts within that group of three or four counties. Uh, and when you look at those numbers, there's actually a fair number of people who are getting double bunked as incumbents, both Democrats and Republicans, uh, who simply may find that when these maps come out, uh, they're going to be either uh, running against a fellow legislator from their own party, or they're just going to have to drop out of the legislature entirely. So it'll be interesting to see who the winners and losers are in that process and uh, whether perhaps the leadership doesn't try to uh, push a few people out that might not be in favor with uh, Republican Party leaders. Interesting. Well, speaking of shifting sands, big news out of Charlotte this week, Dave. All state announcing a large number of jobs yeah, coming to the city. Yeah, it was one of the bigger announcements of uh, new jobs coming to Charlotte, even given its uh, red hot economy. Um, all states planning 2,250 jobs on top of about 1,400 that they already have down there. And the governor came in at uh, $25 million worth of state incentives if they meet these targets. And then the local uh, uh, contribution is going to be another million and a half. So uh, all state considered uh, Chicago area where they're based and Dallas before they picked uh, Charlotte for expansion of their operations center. Well, yeah. we think of Charlotte as being a banking hub. Is this a subtle shift in the business community well, in the Queen City? The, uh, you know, the perception of Charlotte, where our world headquarters is, is uh, of our magazine, is the, uh, uh, you know, Wells Fargo, uh, B of A kind of dominant, which has always been the case, but the uh, financial services uh, ex expansion in, the, in Charlotte has been really remarkable. TIA, Kraft, uh, Fidelity, uh, excuse me, Vanguard, uh, there's a big uh, 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 dimensional fund advisors business coming. It's uh, really uh, kind of untold story in how the uh, back office operations are leaving the Northeast and the Midwest to come into Charlotte, and certainly the Triangle is getting a lot of that also through Fidelity and Credit Suisse. But uh, as a traditional banking industry, uh, you know, uh, doesn't it slows down. There's a lot coming uh, to replace it in uh, the two metro areas. Of course, the problem is what's going on in the rest of the state and I asked the governor that you know did you try to shift some of these jobs to Greensboro where you know they would love to have some growth and he said oh no we sell North Carolina we can't tell companies where to go so it's a you know same old story triangle Charlotte uh, booming and the rest of the state kind of wondering well, what, what's in it for us well yeah. as we start to think about the 2018 elections and gearing up for those generally voter attitudes on the financial well-being of their own family as well as the economic prospects of their city, county, community, and country uh, are for, first and foremost. What, what are the attitudes of business leaders in Charlotte that you talk to about the prospects going forward of the economy? Oh, I think it's uh, extremely bullish. Um, I, I looked at the, uh, uh, the consensus forecasts of the economists of Bloomberg and uh, Wall Street Journal uh, looking out, and it's like, you know, 
three, four year outlook of no recession in sight and uh, limited uh, pay, pickup in inflation. So very positive outlook that I think is reflected in all the expansion you're seeing in the major metro areas uh, around the country and including Triangle and Charlotte. Of the issues you think are likely to be foremost in this election of 2018, Colin, do you think the economy will be something voters are focused on? I think it'll come into play because certainly you'll see at the national level a lot of talk around the economy uh, with President Trump trying to claim that any economic growth is the result of uh, his policies and his leadership. Uh, whereas here, the problem is you're going to have, as you mentioned, uh, this discrepancy between the urban areas that are indeed doing really well and people uh, will have the sense that current policies are working for them. And in the rural areas where they're losing population, as we've recently learned, there's uh, constantly a loss in manufacturing and jobs in those areas. And those places are not going to feel like what's happened in the last few years is their benefit. So they're still going to want some change. Uh, and we'll see how that plays out next year. With some of the swirl of activity in politics, international affairs now eclipsing uh, to some extent domestic issues, is Congress going to be able to get back on track with things like taxation reform and regulatory reform and health care reform? It sure, that, uh, smarter people than me would know that. I, I would uh, hope so, right? Because we just can't be bogged down continually in all the, uh, uh, the, the junk. And it seems like some uh, business community is really counting on tax reform to keep the optimism going through 2018, 2019. But there doesn't seem to be any uh, specifics coming out about what, what's actually going to happen. And uh, sooner or later, that's going to hit um, the confidence of the business community, and and we'll see some uh, decline uh, unless Trump administration can, I think, get its act together. Yeah, but they don't seem to be making many friends in Congress these days, which I think will make it harder to get things like a tax reform package through when you've got all these different constituencies. And uh, every time you change the tax code, there's somebody whose ox is getting gored. So uh, it's always a challenge to do. What, with this issue of redistricting, Colin, do you see that as a distractor to what Republican leaders in the General Assembly might hope to accomplish going into 2018? You know, I think so, because there's the concerns that uh, are elections fair is the core, you know, debate around the redistricting process. And if these districts come out and people feel like, uh, the Republicans are protecting a partisan advantage. They could see some backlash for that next year, but I think the average voter probably isn't too plugged into the minutia of this redistricting process, uh, and they may have a different set of issues by the time we get uh, a year and a half down the road. How about the mayor's race in Charlotte? That's one of the key races in oh, this it's, election. It's, it's, it's very fascinating. Three very strong candidates. Uh, business community, um, speaking generalist, uh, is very uh, ready to have a new mayor in Charlotte. And they're backing uh, Joel Ford pretty significantly and Vi Lyles to a lesser degree. But we have a really tough mayor, and she knows how to fight, and she's not going to go down without a major well, battle. Legislative Republicans backing Ford, a Democrat there, too. That's yeah. been interesting to watch. She has antagonized a lot of people. Interesting yeah. times.